Hello, my name is Orin from CompuMatter, and today this video is going to be over taking a 2012 MacBook Pro and putting Ubuntu Linux on it. What you'll need to do this is a USB stick, at least 12 gigabytes is recommended, as well as of course the computer. In this case I'm going to be turning this into Ubuntu Linux. It's because the current Mac OS operating system is no longer supported, which means it makes it really difficult to do anything that most people would want to do on it, like browse the internet, check email, some things just don't work as well as it's supposed to. On top of that, there's a lot of security risk involved in not using an up-to-date operating system. Whereas Ubuntu Linux, this is the 22.04 edition, and you're going to be fully up-to-date and safe from all the latest viruses. In this example, I am using the A1278, which this model was about mid-2012. Um, I opened this up and I replaced the hard drive over here with a solid state drive to improve the speed. One more thing I will note about this process that you might need is when doing this, your Wi-Fi might not work immediately. And I will go through how to fix that, but in order to fix it, you might need some other way to get online other than the Wi-Fi card that's in this computer. Either Ethernet, using an Ethernet cable from your router or internet source, or if you have a Wi-Fi adapter that you can plug in that would be compatible with this model that you can use just to bypass it and get the updates for the Wi-Fi driver needed to get this working. I'll go into more detail on that later, but feel free to skip ahead if you're working on getting all the parts or things in order needed to do this process. And I'll also put some stuff up here on the screen for you to read just momentarily so that you can also prepare for that. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to need to do though is getting the Ubuntu installer ready and that's going to be on your USB stick. So go ahead and plug that into your computer and let's get started. First of all, we're going to need the application Rufus in order to create a bootable USB drive. This is a very handy tool, pretty easy to use. All you got to do is make sure you go to this website here. And then from here you're going to want to scroll down until you see the download. I'd recommend downloading the latest version as it might change from when I made this video here. The next thing you'll need is the ISO file itself, which you can get directly from ubuntu.com. Very handy. And then once you get to this page, there will be a download section. And you're going to want to get the latest version of this as well. This might take a long time, depending on your internet speed or the speed of your computer in general. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open up Rufus. Now you're going to need to plug in a USB drive that you want to use for this. Make sure you don't have any data on it that you need. It should be all ready to go because everything on that drive is going to get wiped when you do this. So make sure you select with that button there and choose Ubuntu. From there, you can name the volume whatever you'd like. It doesn't really matter um, on anything else, so just go ahead and hit the start button. And then from there, it will take some time. Also, I would just recommend doing the ISO image mode. And it will warn you again that all data on this drive will be deleted, so take that seriously. So once that is done, you will be able to see that it has changed your drive, it has all these different files, it's ready to be booted to. From here, we can eject the USB stick from this computer and prepare for the installation on the MacBook Pro. Alright, so now we have the USB bootable. We can go ahead and plug that into the system. So from here, I would recommend pressing the power button briefly and then immediately holding the option key. I'm going to hold this key until I see the menu pop up. Which just did, so you can let go of it. Now go ahead and click on the one with the USB symbol here and then click the arrow underneath it to boot into that. 
It's really hard to see on this screen because it's a little bit blurry, so I'm going to hold it up a little bit closer, but it says try or install Ubuntu on the top. That's the one that we want to select with the enter key, so I'm going to go ahead and press that. All right. Now the loading time, I noticed it took quite a while even with a solid state drive installed, so if you don't have a solid state, it might take even longer. But it eventually booted in here. And you have two options, you can either try Ubuntu or install. In this tutorial, we're going to install. And my keyboard layout is English US, so I'm going to leave it as that and go ahead and continue. Feel free to change it to whatever you prefer. Unless your machine is low spec, I'd recommend keeping it at normal installation. All right. In this portion, it gives you three options. I would recommend for this tutorial just erasing the disk and installing Ubuntu. Now keep in mind, if you used to have Mac OS on the system and have any important data, that will be wiped out. So make sure you back that up first. You can also install Ubuntu alongside Mac OS or something else if you'd like to have it as a dual boot system. But in this tutorial, we're just wiping out the whole drive and installing Ubuntu, and that's gonna be the only operating system on this computer. It'll give you one final warning that it will destroy all data. I'm going to hit continue. All right, and then i got to choose my time zone here. Go ahead and type that in in the drop down, then hit continue. This is where you can choose your username as well as your computer's name and a password. Go ahead and fill that out and hit the continue button. From there, it might take a long time for the installation process to go through. If you have a conventional hard drive installed in the laptop and never installed a solid state, the time it might take to install will be a lot longer than 5 to 10 minutes, most likely, unless it's in really good condition. But since it is somewhat old hardware, I'm not going to stress it out and expect too much of it at this point. So it's a good time to maybe go get coffee break or something along those lines but I sped up this clip a little bit to make it easier for, for viewing purposes. When it finishes installing, it'll pop up with a restart now option, which you will need to click in order to proceed. All right, and here shortly, it will let us know that it's okay to remove the installation medium, which is the little USB stick that we installed Ubuntu Linux on. It's no longer needed, so feel free to unplug it at this point and then press the enter key on the keyboard when you're done doing so. All right, pressing the enter key, it's going to continue booting and then I'll be able to put in my password. All right, after putting in your password, it'll load into Ubuntu Linux. It'll go through a couple prompts like setting up live patch, improving Ubuntu by having reports, some location services, and a few other things potentially. Just go ahead and click through them with the green next button, and then when you're finished, go ahead and hit the done button at the top right. From here, the pink is a little obnoxious, so I'm gonna go into the wallpaper and change it to something a little bit more natural looking. But I noticed that my Wi-Fi is not working, which is a very common issue on these MacBooks when installing Linux, which I will resolve by plugging in this ethernet cable into the side of the MacBook Pro in order to get internet and download the drivers needed. So once plugged in, the ethernet symbol showed up here at the top right. I'm gonna go down to the bottom left, click on applications, type in terminal, and open up the terminal application as it's needed to fix this issue. From here, you'll need to type in the following command, sudo space apt dash git space update. Then you hit the enter key on your keyboard. You'll be prompted to type in your password and you won't be able to see the password you type in. So you'll just have to blindly put it in and press enter when you're done. And you should see this on your screen saying done without any errors when you do that. Uh, from here, the next command that you'll need to put in is going to be sudo space app dash git space purge space bcm wl dash kernel dash source altogether. No spaces on that last bit. Now on here, I got the error could not get lock. It's held by a process. So in order to fix that, I went ahead and rebooted the system and it showed me that it had an upgrade to do. 
So now that that's all done and rebooted, I'm gonna go back, open up terminal the same way I did before and enter back in the commands I had before. I included that in the video just to show you that sometimes these things can happen and a reboot can fix the issue. All right, so now that I put the sudo app get update in, I'm gonna put back in this command, which is a bcmwl-kernel-source, hit enter on your keyboard, and instead of the thing we saw before, we should see this, and or it will remove a driver of some sort. Now to install it, we'll type in sudo apt-get space install space firmware dash b43 dash installer. Hit enter on your keyboard and it will begin installing things. You'll need to type in the letter Y and hit enter to confirm that you're going to use disk space on the machine to do this. All right. Apologies for the blur on the screen. When the prompt to type in here shows up again at the bottom in green like it is for me, you can reboot the system once more. Feel free to unplug the ethernet cable or Wi-Fi adapter at this point. So now that I've rebooted again, I can see the Wi-Fi again. I can choose a network, log into it, and I'm successfully connected to the internet once I do this without any ethernet cable plugged in. So that's a success. Before doing anything else with the system, I would really recommend updating it to the latest version, including getting all the drivers needed. So you'll hit the applications down at the bottom left again and click on software update and or type in update to get to it. It'll check for updates and then the button should appear to actually install them. Hit the install now button to proceed with that. It'll prompt you for your password. Go ahead and authenticate. Now these updates took me a long time to finish, but after I did them, it seemed the system was a lot faster and more stable. So I would highly recommend it. This took about another five to 10 minutes for all these to go through. Go ahead and enter your password one more time and then you'll need to reboot the machine another time in order to finish the updates. All right, we're back on the system. Now that we got the main operating system up to date, I'm gonna open up Firefox and I noticed on here, you can't really see it, but there is a white pop-up that said it needed to be updated. And when you click on that, it pulls you into this menu where you can authenticate and click the update all button. Although I experienced this issue where it's basically telling me Firefox is running, we can't do an update on a running program. So I held the button on that and it quit and I'm trying one more time. And this time it's actually allowing me to go through with the updates as expected. All right. Now that those are done, I'm gonna go ahead and close down the software updater menu and open up Firefox one more time. And it is no longer going to have a problem with me and just let me search the internet as usual. So YouTube loads right up with the built-in internal Wi-Fi, and Ubuntu Linux is ready for use. That's all for this video on installing Ubuntu Linux 22.04 on a really old 11 year old MacBook Pro. You might be able to do the same process on other older MacBooks as well as newer if you want to put Ubuntu Linux on anything else. All you need to do is have that USB bootable and figure out how to boot to the drive. It might have a different process than some of the newer ones. But other than that, I hope you have learned something from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And furthermore, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.